Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Against the Storm, where things are going relatively well. Today, I think our main goal is to collect as much food as possible. So I was thinking of maybe going out somewhere over here where I could pick up a full 70 food. I don't think I need to go any deeper into the fog of war here. I probably can't reach anything except maybe this. If this is like a loot box, maybe I could get over there. Um, and I'm kind of tempted to go into the marshlands. I do like the marsh. It has really, really good harvesting speed. It also has enormous life, uh, life form nodes. It has tons of leather, tons of stone, tons of coal, a little bit of copper, mushrooms, meat, insects, eggs, and roots. So I think I would like to go for a lizard or harpy based opener. Uh, so I'm going to open up with some harpies. I will take nine harpies on this expedition and I will bring... I could, I could do impossible here, but that would only get me an extra 14 food for like a really, really difficult game. There's not a whole lot of um, farmable soil on this map, so I think harpies are a good choice. The question is, what do I want to bring? I mean, bringing coal is just so nice. It means you don't, I, I won't have beavers. Although, on the other hand, I could bring beavers and harpies, and this would mean I would be able to deal with wood. I've done a few runs without beavers and I kind of don't like not having beavers. So maybe I'll go beavers and lizards. Yeah, beavers and lizards sounds good. And then I'll just come in with some refined resources. Uh, in particular, planks is a good starting point. Planks and coal, this will mean I don't have to worry about converting wood to, to planks early. And also I'll have a ton of coal, so I won't have to worry about fuel. So we do have a positive modifier. If I fulfill complex food, my units will have a 20% chance to double their production yield. Uh, during the drizzle. Normal looming darkness. Muddy ground means my villagers are slower off of road during the storm. Uh, a more slow, this is to do with housing. Uh, sacred flame can protect the settlement from the darkness. Pay three wood for every villager. If you don't, they will lead. Okay, I'm really glad I bought, brought a big wood production. So I'm going to have to get coal production up relatively early here so I can have a huge buffer of wood. But otherwise, I think we're kind of okay. If we take a look at our starting resources here, we do have a leech brood mother which will give us a lot of meat and leather. We have the standard root deposit, a little bit of food in there, and then we have some stone. So we're, we're starting off with some reasonable resources here, although we can't actually scavenge anything. We are going to want to get a hunter's camp, I feel. None of these buildings really appeal to me, although an oil press could be good. We can turn meat into oil, and it would also give me access to flour. It's not like an amazing flour recipe, but why not? And it'll also give me packs of luxury goods, which could be useful. So I'll take a press. Herb garden, plantation, herbalist camp, and brickyard. Well, I feel like these are a little bit of a gamble. The herb garden and plantation, because I don't know if there's going to be much farmable soil. But I tell you what I am going to do this game. I'm going to cut through to a dangerous glade nice and early, because they have a high chance of having um, a lot of resources in them in terms of like farmable soil and stuff like that. So we'll figure that out nice and early into this match. Woodcutters are up. Let's get the beavers to work. Beavers working away. So we're going to have really good wood income now, which is ideal. They'll hopefully cut their way through this forest. And what did we find? We found a big snake nest, some grass cap mushrooms, a root deposit, a copper and coal vein, a large abandoned cache, a manufactory and fallen lizard hunters. Well, we can deal with the fallen lizard hunters pretty quickly. This would give me a chunk of wine, a pack of meat and some baskets of insects. I'm going to go ahead and take those resources and get the lizards to work on it. I will favor the lizards to make them happier. I will begin the investigation and then I'm also immediately going to build some houses for these people to live in. That'll be the number one priority. The lizards resolve will fall down slowly, but once we get these houses up, that should be fine. We also managed to open up into a leech brood mother. Okay, ideal. Five roots per minute. Oh, man, passive food is just so handy. Exploration contract. Gain 20 reed and 20 clay for every discovered glade. Blood prize contract could be good if we decided to play in a way where we could lose a lot of people. Five roots per minute is so good though. To have that baseline food income just always taken care of. Let's have a look at our orders. Ugh, solve any two glade events. You know, I think I could do that. I do have a small encampment and I'm in the middle of solving a glade event. This would give me 50% stone cutters production as well as access to the weaver and four new pop. I'll take it. Amber trade, sell goods, cut through two new glades, salvage new things. This will give me a stone production. Sure, we're going to go heavy on the stone cutter side of things right now, I guess. Um, I have a stone cutters camp or have starting tools. Do I even have? 
I'll have any tools. How would I even get those tools? Realistically, I don't have a way to get those tools, but if I did, I would take this because this is a super great recipe boost. But I think I'll take packs of crops. No, I'm going to take camps. Camps should be solvable really quickly. You got you to gotta kind of balance between like what's really, really good long term and what like you can do in a reasonable amount of time. And I think the fact that I just have a passive root income is like super nice. I'm going to spend all my, my spare worker time uh, building my road grid. It'll give him something to do. Let's take a couple of beaver harvesters and do this mission here. Uh, I'll trade in some of these uh, and get new population. Just seems really, really good to have a lot of population, even though there is a big downside for this run. Uh, having a lot of population has like big negatives, but I think we should be fine. Nice, first two houses are coming up. Super great. And that did count as a glade event. Perfecto. And that counted as a glade event as well, so we can turn this in. I'm not going to turn it in yet, though. Do I want it? Yeah, I'll turn it in now. Sure. So now I got a huge early game population boost. That's going to be super helpful. So I'll start woodcutting in this general area. Where is my next woodcutting expedition going to be going? I need to figure out what I want to do with the manufactory. This will give me access to actually three really good um, resources. Training gear, pigments, and packs of provisions. So this is definitely something I want to salvage. So it's about time that we thought about getting our stonecutter camp up so we can harvest these stone. I have no use for a scavenger's camp. Well, there are eggs over here, I guess, but I have a root delivery line, so I don't quite need to go for food just yet. I think I would rather make sure that I have um, really, really good wood production and then resource processing. So we'll kind of work on that for a little while. Annoyingly, this mine, this coal and copper spawned on opposite. Like I can't get both which is kind of annoying. So that's not a very good mine. So I'd want to find a new mine. Construction is happening. Perfect. Everything is getting pulled up really, really quickly. Let's get a couple of people working on this. We definitely want more stone income. We have our trade routes up. Anything I could sell? Well, actually, I probably need packs of provisions before I can start doing that. But I would like to do a little bit of trading. Trading is always worth it, I feel. And my lizards are actually happy. It's because they have access to skewers. I might take away their skewers until I really need it. Let's re-roll, because I haven't found farmable tiles. Could go for the market here. Global carrying capacity is increased. Bakery, I do have a way to make wheat. I do also have roots. Biscuits are eaten by who, is my question. Just beavers, but that's okay. I think if I was looking for a tier two food, it would be pickled goods, which does not exist. But a kiln could be really good. It would give me access, a way to convert wood into coal really efficiently and then kind of a crappy recipe here's the thing i could turn wood into coal but would i not be better off just mining coal with dwarves or with uh with beavers i feel like i just mining coal is just easier um so i don't actually have really good buildings here to pick from i might have to pick like a crappy building no we'll hold off and we'll, we'll make a decision on these recipes later i mean wine is always a reasonable choice and picking up the market well, I don't know if I have harpies yet. I only harpies care about makeup. So we'll see. Right, let's get the crude workstation churning. We definitely want to have a little bit of resources in the bank. Now the trees in this forest... Oh, my beavers are unhappy. Ah, because I'm favoring the lizards. Okay. Now, the uh, the trees in this game have a 15% chance to give mushrooms and a 5% chance to give leather. Or furs, rather. So we are not going to be swimming in furs and stuff like that. So it will be important for us to build fabric efficiently. So I've disabled the fabric recipe from the crude workstation and I'll probably only produce it from the weaver. Let's just go ahead and take the tink tree. I don't love the tink tree, but it does give me access to ale and wine, which could line up with some of our other goals. Now, I really like the idea of getting a workshop. However, it would only be an upgrade for my planks and my bricks. So maybe I would take this instead, the carpenter. They would upgrade my luxury goods, give me access to simple tools. Pickled goods is super good, though, is the problem. Yeah, I, I have to hold off and see what my next cornerstone and group of immigrants are. If they're humans, I might look for farming resources. All right, it's a new year. We discovered a new thing. Small abandoned cache, snake bird nest. What do we got here? Okay, so we do have humans. Let's take the group of beavers cornerstone fertile soil is reduced amber gain three barrels for every 10 planks produced this is super good now this will point me in the direction of an efficient plank recipe so i think i will take um 
the carpenter. I would like the provisioner, but I do have the manufactory here, which will allow me to make pigment, training gear, and provisions. I mean, the brick oven adds the most diversity to my economy. Flour. What are our orders looking like? That might point our direction. Farmers can carry more items. Luxurious delivery. I mean, we can get to work on that. I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't have luxuries to trade, do I? Because if I place the carpenter speculatively, what could I turn into luxury goods? Well, I could turn oil and incense and all these things in. See, I'll do the luxury good trade. That'll get me more population. Then what have we got here? Lizard population. Keep them happy. This will give me access to the butcher. I have a lot of lizards on this map, so keeping lizards happy seems like a good move. Let's get people working here. A scavenger's camp probably isn't the worst thing I could build. I would really like a better camp of some kind, but that just doesn't seem to be forthcoming. Let's get someone working away in here, producing these basic stuff. Get that fabric converted. We don't have much use for it otherwise. We have nothing to trade with this guy, so we'll just have to make do. We will assign a couple of lizards to the scavenging camp. Ideally, this would be a meat gathering camp. Um, but scavenging camp will just have to make do. I can't help but feel that this manufactory is my pathway forward, so maybe I could get it repaired. I'll have to wait for actual, like, tier 2 resources to be produced. This thing has to empty out its uh, inventory. We're about to open up another couple of dangerous glades, and it's probably a bad time to do it. We found a blight rot cyst. These are really, really bad. Um, but we do have a huge amount of food in the bank, so we can do this and accept the huge amount of food that it's going to eat away at us. It will mean that we have better crystallized dew production, which is not too bad. And we also found an artisan, which will allow me to build coats, pigment and barrels. I should start actually having barrels be produced just passively as I make planks. What have we got here? Leech brood mother, snake nest, gr mushroom. So I would love and some coal, a really good coal deposit. That's actually fantastic. And then a fuming machinery. So the fuming machinery is going to be hard to deal with. I think I would like to go for keep goods here. Now, what I need it's like a ton of barrels, which means I need to get this carpenter cranking on planks. So immediately get as many beavers working on plank production here. How the hell am I going to solve this? It's got to be just path passive barrel production, but I need to produce so many planks to do this. It's really the only way I can deal with it. I'd have to sell so many resources to get it. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. If I can pull it off, I'd be really happy, but this explosion would be really bad. I would love to get this coal. I'd love to get the prosperous archaeology. There's so many good things that would happen if I could get it. Uh, I will take a camp boost. Probably be a good idea to salvage a building too. Let's see, where could I recover some population? Nowhere. Everyone's busy. The crude workstation probably not necessary. So I'll add someone onto that to get this done a little bit quicker. All of my population are working. If this had happened a little bit later, it would have been so good. But the fact that it came up just a little bit too early into the map for me. Okay, the Blight Rot Cyst has been solved. Big upside, cancel you. You start hauling over any barrels that we have to here. And go ahead and keep those goods. We have a little bit of barrelage in storage. So I just have to pray that um, I can get enough barrels here. I, I'm going to be, it's going to be very, very close that I get enough barrels to solve this event. What if I call the trader? Call the trader immediately. There's a very small chance maybe we can get the resources we need to finish this. So Hilda, can you help me out? <laughs> Simple tools. We're missing one barrel. It's got to be close. I think we can do it though. Uh, so Hilda. Ooh, if I could get that trapper's camp. I need 17 amber. If I traded away all of my stone, I could get it. But my problem is then... I don't have any more stone, and that's my only real way to make brick, is with stone. Let me have a little bit of a think about this. I have a decent amount of food, so I can probably safely trade away some of my roots. Oh wow, I can actually get it with roots quite easily. 97 roots, trade, gets me the trapper's camp. I would love the herbalist camp as well. What if I went for the herbalist camp? I could trade away all of my food, but that's probably not advisable. Um, let's trade away a little bit of wood. Wood has like a little bit of value. Trade away a little bit of stone. Stone has value. Trade away a little bit of this. A little bit of this. No, this is actually quite valuable. Cloth is valuable. Wood isn't valuable. And there she goes. Now I have the herbalist camp and the trapper's camp. This is super good. Trapper's camp especially. Look at all that meat, all the eggs all this sort of stuff. We can get rid of the scavenger camp now. Boom. We don't need it anymore because the, the trapper's camp just operates better. 
at the job that it does. And the herbalist camp means we, sh- we can collect mushrooms. So we shouldn't really run into food issues, even though we haven't found renewable land or renewable like farmland, rather. Renewable land. What a dumb thing to say. <laughs> so we're in the storm. Things are pretty bad. I just sold all of my wood. So let's see if we can get a bit of wood cutting going. It's probably time we stopped doing this. No, I need the barrels. <gasps> okay. Ah, it's going to explode. I couldn't get it in time. I feel like if you're doing this, this should pause this. That's really frustrating. I like turned my entire empire towards solving this problem. And it still wasn't enough. <sighs> okay, so we just had a massive explosion in our town and killed a whole bunch of our people. Um, really annoying. So we're gonna have to figure out how to recover from this. We lost a builder, a stonecutter and a builder. Damn. Well, at least I do have completed orders and we did make it through. Traders arriving quicker is really, really nice. Meat production, getting better. The more meat you produce, this is perfect. Okay, so now that we have a hunter's camp, now we have a way to make meat. We can prioritize meat production, make a ton of meat. Meat will continue to go up. We'll stack up a huge amount of meat. We can turn that into some sort of good. Let's get some lizards to replace what we lost. We can deliver this goal. We'll pick a new one. Taking care of clothing needs is quite doable. Solving any three dangerous glade events would get me a monastery. I'm going to go ahead and go for clothing. This should be doable for me. And let's see, Lizard Resolve. There's no way I'm going to be able to do Thirsty Trader, so I'll do Lizard Resolve. We should be able to make the lizards happy this run. Now I want to look for things that make things that make lizards happy, like the cookhouse. Okay, we'll take the cookhouse. What else do we have? I think we already have training gear. It would be good to do coats because I'm pretty sure I have a, yeah, fulfill coats need mission. We already, but the problem is this only makes coats, right? We already have a way to get barrels. Pack of provisions upgrade. I already have a place that can do provisions though. I wish it would take into account the buildings that I have. Like I already have a manufactory. That's the thing. I have one. <laughs> Tool shed. Honestly, none of these are very good. So I'm just going to sit on what I have. I will, however, get an early cookhouse so they can start to turn meat and tubers into skewers because I'm pretty sure the lizards will eat the skewers and that'll keep them happy. I guess the one upside of this is that it made a huge amount of room for me to build an economy in and I can start to produce coal soon. It sucks, but it has an upside. Let's get a beaver producing a bit of cloth. How much brick do we have in storage? We have no brick, so it'd be good to get a beaver working on making brick. We don't need you to make planks. I probably never need more than like, I have probably made all the planks I'll need for this game. Let's pack up these luxury goods uh, so we can start doing luxurious delivery. So I'll put a couple beavers working on that and then put this limit to 20 and then put the tool production online as well. So they'll just work away happily producing for me. What else we got? We've got one, two, three unemployed and one unhoused individually. Make sure we move this house next to where they live. We'll see how the town develops. We've got four unemployed people. I could honestly, I could go for another trapper's camp, but I, you know what? I think a few people are going to work in the cookhouse. My humans, at least. Where do I have humans employed? Do I only have one human? I only have one. Okay. So this counts as warmth. So I could put lizards in here and they'll be happier. Apparently I have flour. I didn't know I had flour. I got flour from somewhere. I can produce flour from the press, however, which would be good. So I'll make a press. And here's a triple coal mine, which is about as good as you're going to get. I don't think you get really any better than three coal. So we'll take that one. Well, actually, let's move the woodcutter camp first. That should take the edge off our fuel needs. What, what, what is using all my wood? Is it this place in here? No, nope. shouldn't be. Right, what's going on here? Right, I'm going to put a couple of beavers working on this. So we'll have lots of coal and then we can deactivate burning anything but coal. This should meet all of the needs of our things. Uh, we burn, what is it, one coal about every minute. These guys produce three coal a minute. So this should give us more than enough um, to sustain our coal production. And then that should also leave some left over to be turned into pigment goods and stuff like that. We completed an order. Looks like we managed to build other luxury goods. This will get us amber, copper bars and more population. Fantastic. Hmm, maybe coat production isn't the worst thing we could do. Let's re-roll this. We could go for the tavern. We can build training gear and I'm pretty sure we can make ale. Yeah, let's take the tavern. This is a plus three global resolve if I put pe three people working here and we can fulfill two needs. So that'll be factoring into our plans. Probably won't be going for the explorer's lodge as good as it is. Although honestly, 
found a lot of ruins this game so maybe an explorer's lodge is really really good let's do it let's go very resolve heavy i don't need a provisioner I could make use of a stamping mill it's a slightly better flour recipe slightly better copper bars this would allow me to actually produce coats and that is one of my missions slightly better packs of trade goods too let's take the smithy so i have a press here i definitely want you don't want you to build luxury goods in this press and it would be nice to turn roots into flour i'll just put one worker on that one beaver will be turning roots into flour you don't need to fill you don't need to fill out every slot in a building that's a that's a mistake i make a lot right what else we got the smithy would like to be built as would the tavern and explorer's lodge how are we doing for brick production we've got a decent amount of brick production let's put a second guy to work on there so we can get bricks made faster grab ourselves a beaver house or two in this general area that'll keep these guys happy you guys have no work so i'll just unemploy everyone except one just in case some stuff comes up now you know what you all can go unemployed uh, and figure out how to build things ton of unemployed people which is not ideal which tells me i need to build stuff so where am i getting my ale from the tink tree we'll get that down and you know what i could probably do a storage building over here just to speed up the delivery of resources all right so we got a tink tree um i can produce pigment here at the same rate that i can at the cookhouse which is handy enough I can also produce, if I use barrels, I can also make wine from mushrooms. So that's actually quite good. These are interesting that I have access to so many trade goods. Ale can be produced using barrels and roots. And that's going to be the primary thing that we want to do here. So let's get you producing ale. Um, we will slap a tavern down right here. Now this is going to be a very expensive building. 20 planks, 4 bricks and 8 fabric. But I want the tavern and the explorer's lodge both of them to go down we have a smithy here um, let's put one guy making coats and now we have a way to make better trade goods as far as i'm concerned this is a one star recipe whereas this is a two star recipe which means it's about it's actually like about 25 to 50 percent more efficient uh, as you go up the stars it, star like the the quality level of your recipe is actually a big part of your gameplay now i finally have some packs of provisions so we can look into selling some basic stuff that we have in surplus like here's a pretty decent cloth selling we have tons of leather, so I could easily sell this off, but that's also a construction material, which makes it more difficult. But we should be fine for now. We don't need to make that decision immediately. How is our skewer production? We've got good skewer production. My lizards are happy. We'll start building lizard houses soon to keep them even happier. Yep, we're holding, we're holding steady through the storm. Beaver resolve is low. Why is that? Looming darkness is just rough. Should be fine. Burn a little bit of wood in that to keep people happy. Maybe I should start cutting through. We do have an encampment over here. We could get more population. Let's do it. Let's get more pop. The question is, do I want to get a second trapper's camp? I'm kind of tempted to go double trapper camp. Because there's a really, really good bug load over here. Yeah, let's go double trapper camp. We'll bring this road down. And we'll put a storage right here. Fairly central. We can start to build this out as a minor hub. Now the artisan actually is a coat producing place. Did I take a smithy? I probably didn't need to take the smithy because I forgot I had the coat producing building here. A lot of pig, a lot of buildings producing pigment for me. Which is kind of interesting. But this is a two star coat recipe as opposed to a two star coat recipe. The only thing this is really adding to my town if I... So I think I'm just going to salvage it. Full salvage. It'll be fine. I'm going to set a limit of 40 skewers. I don't think you ever need more than 40 skewers. It should be more than enough in the bank. Let's have a look at our orders. Open four caches. So I'm sitting on a lot of tools, so this could be viable. Ooh, fulfill leisure needs, and this would get me seller. The problem is the seller, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if it would add much to my town. I mean, it would be a really good wine production facility, and it would also get me jerky, which isn't terrible. Yeah, let's take the seller. We can produce ale, and we plan to produce ale. In fact, we are producing ale. Let me have a look at you, good sir. You could sell me the rain mill. None of these really appeal to me. Is there anything you're selling that I could take? Honestly, no. Don't see a reason to trade here. 50% chance of a farmer double yield from biscuits. Now I can produce biscuits. However, I don't have any reason to. In terms of immigrants, I will take uh, some more beavers and humans. Cornerstone. Storm duration. Honestly, better wood production is fine because harvesting and planting being slower is fine because I don't have any farming. All my food is coming from other areas. So I'll take Rudy Ground. This will give me tons of wood. Always try to build a house or something near um, where your production buildings are because then the people who live and work near that or the people who work in that house will then live near their house, which is 
uh, an advantage for them. It's why I've been moving houses around with my woodcutting shacks, because the people who work in the woodcutter can get their needs met there. Let's add a couple of lizards to this trapping camp so we can get tons of bugs. So I have a few tools in stockpile, so I could solve some of these events. Go ahead and investigate to get more population. And then I've got this over here, 16 tools for five artifacts, 40 ale, 50 stone, or a rep point. I think I can get rep point through resolve this game, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep these goods. It should be fine. I have enough herbs. This might be worth a trade, like 12 herbs and three packs of provisions for three amber. That seems like a reasonable deal. Mm, what else could I sell here? I could sell off a decent amount of fur. Like 45 fur for 10 amber, I'll take, I'll take that deal. So I'm at full employment and everything is looking fine. We're burning through resources, but that's good. We're just low on planks, but we are slowly producing planks in here. Although we're also using planks to make tools, but I think those tools will pay huge dividends if I go for them. So I think I'm kind of okay with that. My lizards are actually happy and that's getting me a little bit of resolve, not much, but we will get a decent amount of reputation from resolve this run. This trapper camp ran out of meat. Let's move it over to the meat location. Yeah, look at this meat production. Um, I'm pretty sure my trappers are now producing three meat from every one node of this broodmother, which is just like godlike. Like the amount of meat that we'll have in storage is insane. We opened up a new deposit. Where out of curiosity is my stone guys? Because I do need more stone. I'm out of stone. Let's get these guys over here to collect that stone up. Another coal mine, although we don't need another one. We have a really, really good one doing the job. We found more meat and roots over here. So we're pretty good for food, at least on a harvesting standpoint. We finally got the tavern up. So I am going to want to start to produce training gear. I'm not sure where I can produce it. I'm like 99% sure I have a building that can make it though. The weaver can make training gear, which is pretty pog. But at least let's kind of staff it so that we can get this plus three resolve going. That's just a really, really nice plus three resolve. Plus people can fulfill their leisure need. And by fulfilling their leisure need, they'll actually get plus eight to their resolve, which should start pushing us into the happiness end of the end of the spectrum. Looks like I've completed an order and it was the clothing order. So we will get a lot more tanning racks and we get a ton of fabric out of this. This is a great pickup. What are we looking at? We're at halfway reputation, which is pretty good for year four to be halfway done in reputation. That's like a satisfying amount. My big problem is that I'm at full employment and I have no one who's building things right now. If anywhere I can shave a job off, well, tool production is kind of important as of the plank production. Could be packing up ale for luxury goods. It's a new season, so it might be worth talking about delivering things. We only really have stone that we can sell through these trade routes, stone and clay, which I don't want to do. Although maybe a single stone trade route here to get plus one reputation with these guys would be worth it. And our resolve is now strong enough that we'll be able to make it through this winter without issues. Yeah, it looks like I'm eating through my roots faster than they can come in. So I'll go ahead and set this cookhouse to produce a little bit of pigment just to give them something to do, use up that coal. Uh, we have the Explorer's Lodge. So if I put three people in here, this will get me plus one global resolve for each rebuilt or salvaged ruin, which would be plus two resolve. Um, I don't need this right now, but having the building is good because I can boost my resolve by working it, which is always welcome. My lizards are a little bit unhappy, so I'll have to start solving that issue. Okay, herb and root production is increased by plus one for every 75 biscuits produced. Villagers can travel faster, extra stone production isn't bad, or we can start producing incense and increase human resolve. Um, where would I produce incense? That's the real question. Honestly, I don't think I have a building for it. Being able to produce scrolls would be dead handy, as this would be used inside the Explorer Lodge to meet the education need. So I think we will go for a scribe here, even though it's only going to exist for scroll production. And then building a furnace would mean I would n no longer need to deal with basic brick production in this crude workstation. So let's get a furnace down. That seems like a really, really good idea. And then I suppose I shall also throw down a little scribe. In terms of immigrants, is a four pack of immigrants with two humans in it. I'll take that. Let's re-roll our cornerstones. Let's have a look here. Mushroom production increased. Well-rested workers. Moldy grain seeds is so good. I think I'll go for fungal guide and then finally make a um, a mushroom camp, a herbalist camp, so I can start gathering mushrooms because like there's a decent amount of mushrooms and mushrooms can be used for a variety of tier two food. Now here's what I need to do. I need to get my lizard resolve up. So I'm going to tap lighter treatment on my, on my lizards so I can finish this because I have two missions that are dependent upon lizard resolve. 
what else can I do? So they have skewers, they don't have pies, they don't have pickled goods, they don't have jerky. I could fulfill their need to, of brotherhood by producing training gear. Probably be a good idea to put a limit on Weaver because I've literally just turned like all of the fiber, fabri all the leather in my economy into um, <laughs> into fabric, which is probably a bit excessive considering I have 72 of it right now. Um, but there's basic rights done. So we will get the seller now, which will let us produce pickled goods. Wood and provision seems very doable. Fulfill clothing needs a hundred times seems very doable. Uh, I think I'm going to go for wood and provisions. This seems much easier. And then Utopia have pie skewers and jerky. This would add VAT. Oh man, that's going to be tough. <sighs> probably not going to do either of those. So we'll have to win through resolve. There we go. Lizard population has been satisfied. This will get us a box of simple tools as well as the butcher. Let's get a butcher down in town. There seems as good as anywhere. And the only thing I'm missing now is a cellar, right? Yeah, we'll pop down a cute little cellar here. So Hilda has arrived. Now this is where we could maybe start doing a little bit of proper trading. Plus one mushroom production seems based. Extra storage capacity in buildings. Biscuits can now be produced in kiln. I think I have a kiln. No, it's one of the few buildings I don't have. I don't need a plantation. Plus one mushroom production just seems pretty good. I'll take that. And I will go ahead and resolve this. Pick up a little bit of food. Probably about time that I explore some more dangerous glades. Although the sacred flame ritual is a little bit scary because I have a ton of villagers and I need to pay three per villager. But my lizard resolve is above 22. So I should be able to complete this next one. And then I might be able to do a mass burn of resources alongside training gear. Where was it that I was producing this i need to get this built i just like where are all my planks bro you guys need to deliver these planks go ahead and deliver them immediately We've got 20 planks sitting in this storage that should get a bunch of these buildings produced i think i assign three people to the explorer's lodge we can start getting bloodthirst uh, sated as well as education in fact two places can do bloodthirst then we get some people into the scribe to make scrolls we cancel two woodcutters to bring our hostility down so resolve goes up we cancel lighter treatment we come in here and we just smoke every bit of resource that we have for resolve and try to push we're getting 1.47 resolve per minute we're burning everything 1.69 resolve per minute about to run out of wood let's bring this down resolve is dipping but reputation is still cranking 1.5 rep per minute we're smoking our coal but that's fine. You get so much resolve from coal. I just start respecting coal mines as a way to win the game. Look at that. Beautiful. That's the cleanest win I've done in this run. And it was the final run too. I feel like I'm getting the hang of the game again. So we leveled up. We got new Citadel upgrades. We also have access to a new trader. We also have the Forge Trip Hammer, which is a new cornerstone, which allows us to produce parts, but it does hurt resolve. We also have the Rain Collection Filter, which is a cornerstone. Uh, crystallized dew can be produced in the rain collector, but resolver is lowered by five. And then we have tightened belt, which is travel costs and trade routes reduced by minus one, but doesn't apply to routes already in progress. This effect scales with quantity. Ooh, tightened belt is super good. If a trade route costs one provision, if this means it costs zero, this is huge. Super happy with that run. And I feel like I'm getting much better at the game. Um, but that is the end of the run right we have we have built one two three four five six towns of varying difficulty of varying progress levels let's go ahead and end the current cycle the blight storm has come to an end we have gathered an insane amount of food we unlocked a huge amount of content we gained a level so she will reward her most faithful and resourceful let's end the cycle and see what happens Oh, look at that. A ton of food and resources we just picked up. So ending the cycle is super based. And uh, now we've got, now we're competing with two new people. We've got Baron Lance, no fertile soil in this entire region. But I just did a run with no fertile soil. So I think it's very doable. Kind of an interesting one. All right, let's look at upgrades. 2% global production speed. It seems really, really good. It's relatively cheap. Plus one worker cap carry capacity. That seems so good. 2% work speed. It doesn't seem like much, but this is a level 7 building. So that's a 14% global production speed my entire place. And it'll eventually be 16%. I like it. I'll take it. Production speed seems based. I'm going to make friends with the Monastery of the Vigilant Flame. Being able to take ale delivery lines as embark bonuses actually seems kind of insane. And then I'll take uh, Vanguard Spires. This will mean that every time I get an immigrant 
group they will actually have more resources and all my resource nodes will get a boost just plus one charge but you know this adds up over time so does that mean if i decide to go embark here i could get three ale per minute that really doesn't seem like a lot of ale <laughs> but if you save this all up over the course of a game pack it up into trade goods do stuff like that you could do some interesting stuff but i love you all very very much i hope you guys enjoyed this revisit to against the storm and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.